All right, boys, we are back, and it's time to continue year one with our Pittsburgh Penguins. We just started up the simulation in the last video. Uh, we started off pretty good. I think we were 4-0, but uh, we went on a little bit of a winning streak, but we've also had a little bit of a losing streak. Now, we're not in a bad spot. I mean, if you look at our uh, points right now, the Pittsburgh Penguins, 32 points, second in our division, but there's a lot of teams that are around that uh, that point plateau right now. You know, there's uh, the highest team in the NHL is 36 points, but let's say go down to like 30 points. There's a lot of teams in between 36 and 30 points right now. So we're in a good spot. But it's starting to get, you know, to that halfway part of the season. You know, it will be soon anyways. So we want to make sure that we keep on winning. Um, our offense has been there, but one stat that really popped out for us was our penalty kill. Right now, our penalty kill is just uh, not getting it done. And uh, I was reading your comments, some people suggesting make another trade. I wanted to wait till a little bit later on in the season to make a trade. But uh, there were some people saying go out and get Ryan O'Reilly from the Colorado Avalanche. And uh, then you could just fill out the top six a lot better. I mean, uh, you could go with uh, Malkin, Crosby, and uh, Bobby Ryan on the first, and then Kunitz with uh, O'Reilly and uh, Hornquist on the second. I don't ever want to put Malkin and Crosby on the same line. Uh, I want to keep them separated. So you have a 93 overall offensive dynamo you like pretty much on the ice at all times, you know what I mean? So I don't want to ever put those guys together. Uh, maybe during the playoffs, if we're down a series, to try something out, fine. But I think this should be the 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 core of the Pittsburgh Penguins for the next 10 years. Crosby, Malkin, Malkin, Crosby, in the middle, all right? So I want to build a team around them rather than moving Malkin up and building a team like that. That just, to me, doesn't work. I got I to gotta get the team working like this. So Kunitz is going to stay on the first line with Crosby and Bobby Ryan. Hornfist is going to stay with Malkin and and Spalling's actually been having a pretty good season for a 79 overall two-way forward. So it, maybe he might get better. We're going to leave all this the same, right? But we're going to go to the penalty kill. I also put Paul Martin on the uh, first line uh, defense instead of Oli Matt. And we might be able to change that back. But I want to see if Paul Martin can help out a little bit with uh, the defensive side of things. But the, uh, the penalty kill, right? I want to use Chris Kunitz because out of the top six, Chris Kunitz was the guy with the least amount of points. So if he's not getting it done five on five and on the power play, let's use him for the penalty kill. So we'll go Chris Kunitz on the penalty kill with Zach Smith, Gotch, and uh, who else did I want to use? I can go Kunitz, and then Blake Homo is probably the best bet. Yeah, Blake Homo would be the best bet. All right, so we're going we're gonna to go with uh, Chris Kunitz on the penalty kill now. Let's see if he can... Uh, Help it out a little bit. We'll let him be the man on the penalty kill. Como. All right. And if uh, we need something else come trade deadline, then we'll make a trade. I, I would like to hit two birds with one stone. Kind of like uh, fill at the top six. A second line left winger who could also uh, kill penalties. Because Zach Smith and Gotch are fine as one, two penalty killers in the center. But to have like somebody in the mid 80s as the wingers, you know, that would help out. And that, that would be the perfect spot to fill right there. It could even be a first liner if we decide to trade Kunitz. I'm not going to, you know, start spreading uh, ideas around just yet. It's still early on in the season. But when we uh, stopped in the last video, the standings indicated that the penalty kill needed some help. So I've taken care of that. Now let's get back to the simulating. I want to get to the trade deadline in this video, but we'll go month by month just to uh, stay on top of things. So I'll give you guys like a recap for the last one. I think it was our, um, our second line was actually producing better than our first line, wasn't it? Kunitz was like down there, like Spalding had more points than Chris Kunitz. Uh, Crosby was like barely point per game, Malkin just under uh, under there. And it kind of sucks because in real life, you know, you expect them to get like uh, definitely a point per game season, especially if they're not getting injured. But uh, I'd be happy with Crosby just getting like 80 something points, Malkin 70 something points. You know, it's got it's to be realistic for NHL 14 simulation. So 80 points, point per game for Crosby and at least 70 points for Malkin. I want to have a really good second line. We've been able to have it in, pre in previous uh, GM mode, so why not here, right? And that's why I want to fill out that uh, second line left wing. I feel like Crosby and Malkin, it's the same thing like we had in San Jose with... Uh with uh, McFarland and DeCall. You can have two centers get ridiculous seasons. Even when we had Joe Pavelski and uh, Joe Thornton, then Logan Couture and uh, Joe Pavelski. You know, the one-two can always get uh, points. So I don't want to put Malkin and Crosby on the same line. I know it looks sexy, especially considering I made Malkin a sniper, but uh, I don't know. I think we got to uh, we gotta get them going separately. All right? But we'll see. We'll see what happens here. So 21-15-1. We were actually winning some games there. Lost a few. Hornquist, 16 goals. Sidney Crosby, 19 assists. How many games played? Yeah, Crosby's not doing bad, it looks like. Let's get to the end of this month. We'll take a look at the stats again. I wish I could remember from last year. Oh, look at that. Bo Bennett's got 16 goals on Ottawa. That's not bad. He's probably beaten uh, Bobby Ryan. So uh, they must be giving him first-line time, Bo Bennett, in, uh, in uh, Ottawa. That's pretty good for him, I guess. That trade, you know what? That trade was pretty good. 
Because even if I'm not, I don't hold on to guys like uh, Chris Phillips. We can make the trade. We can retrade him at the trade deadline, and I won't get any uh, GM reputation negatives for uh, trading players that are just newly acquired, right? So I still have those trading assets. They're just they're not that high up, but you know if we can make it into the playoffs, then I won't need to trade them. But if things go south, I still have some assets I can dump to get some younger players. I don't want to do that though. So 23, 16, and three at the end of December. We're going into January. Let's take a look at the stats here. All right, so the Metropolitan Division, we are in second with 49 points. Uh, yeah, we're in, good, we're, in a good, we're in a good position right now. 23 wins, we're getting some wins. Uh, first in the NHL right now is 53, 54 points. And look at that, you know, like everyone complains about my rosters, right? But this is why I make the rosters the way they are. Look at who the top four teams in the NHL are. LA, Chicago, Boston, and New York, all right? That's, that's basically why I uh, make some of the uh, line change or the uh, attributes a little bit different. Not necessarily so the players look more realistic, but so the simulation engine works better for years one and two. All right, so uh, we'll see how that works towards the end of the year. Uh, so let's go into the player stats here, team standings. I want to keep an eye on our penalty kill for the next month, see if it gets better with uh, Kunitz in there. All right, so goals four per game. Uh, we're scoring enough goals. Only LA and Chicago are scoring more goals than us. 2.9 is fine. Uh, and if we get a better second line left wing come the trade deadline, I think that would help it uh, as well. And I think a lot of these are five on five goals because our power play before wasn't that good. We'll check that in a second. Goals against per game. All right, it's getting better. 2.5. All right, so it is getting better. It is top 10 in the NHL now. So that's good news. We have to make our goals against better. Our goals four is going to be there. Uh, power play percentage. All right, one of the worst in the NHL. Now, you know, I know that may look bad, but we're also third best for goals four, right? So maybe just because all of our goals are coming five on five, we don't need a good power play. I mean... <laughs> I, I know it sounds like crap, you know, in real life that, would, that wouldn't that would make sense. But in the game, we're still scoring goals, and maybe it's just we don't need the power play goals. Wh whatever way our team's working out, they just get five-on-five five goals. All right, so uh, as long as our goals four stay up there, I don't care if it's five-on-five five goals or power play goals. Right, and there's really not much more we can do to the power play. I don't want to move Malcolm with Crosby. Let's just keep it the same way it is. Spread out the points. Uh, penalty kill percentage. All right, so we are second worst in the NHL. Oh, third worst in the NHL, the Pittsburgh Penguins. That is something we need to address. So 78.2%. We'll, we'll come back and check that in a month. 78.2, 78.2. i got to remember that. Home record, 13-7-0. Away record, 10-9-3. And, and our last 10-5-3-2. All right, so what was it again? 78.2. I'll remember that. So we want to keep an eye on our penalty kill player stats this time. Let's see who's producing and who's not producing. It's really all about our top six when it comes to points. So Crosby, 37 points in 42 games played. All right. Could be a little bit better for Sid the Kid. Bobby Ryan, 36 and 42. Evgeny Malkin, 35 and 42. Hornquist, 30 and 42. And Chris Kunitz. You know, I think Chris Kunitz might be holding Sidney Crosby and Bobby Ryan back on that first line, boys. He might be. Now, I, I can't trade him just yet. We got to wait, right? But that could be the reason. I mean, if you look at his stats, his passing's only 85. He doesn't have a great shot. I know his offense awareness is up there, but we all know about the individual stats that really promote a player's uh, ability to put up points during the regular season. The shooting category is big time for goals, and the passing category. If that passing category was up there, he'd have a lot more uh, assists helping out that first line, right? So Chris Kunitz might not be the right thing for the first line. Not much I can do about it right now because he is killing penalties. He's a plus nine on that line, all right? So, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna use that excuse that I've used for players in the past. He's he's playing the defensive side of the game, all right? And as long as we're, as long as we're above 500, I can't really complain tremendously about it. Uh, shooting percentage, shots, here's all that extra stuff for you guys that I never check. All right, here you go, blah, 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 blah. All right, uh, defenseman, let's take a look at this stuff. All right, Crystal Tang. 23 points and 42. I think they're all they're all plus players as well. Interesting, man. It looks like we're allowing a lot of goals in the penalty kill. That's where it seems like all of our goals are coming from. Uh, and Mark Andre Fleury's goals against has gotten a lot better. 2.09, 22, 10, and one, and a save percentage of 92.6. I mean, that's actually really good numbers. He's pulled it together. And you got to think that because of the bad start, he must be playing really good to get the numbers back to that. So. Let's just keep on going here, right? So 78.2 or 70.2. I think it was 78.2. That's uh, that's what the penalty kill was. Let's see if it can become a little bit better. Because I'm trying to think here. 
I want a penalty killer. I'd love to use Malkin and Crosby on the penalty kill. I actually saw a comment saying that Crosby does kill uh, penalties. If he does, I don't know about it. Again, I'm not. A, I don't get to watch Pittsburgh too often, right? But um, I'd like to find a uh, you know a solid. I was thinking about it, like a Jordan Stahl type player. You know, a third line center who is just a beast uh, at uh, the defensive ho uh, side of hockey, and then he could be my first line penalty killer because I do want to have a solid first line center for a penalty killer, right? And if you have a nice uh, first or second liner who can do both, it kind of works out. But we don't really have that here in Pittsburgh. I guess I could try it, but uh, I don't know how realistic that would be. Crosby Malkin for the power plays all the time. They could play a minute and a half power plays, five on five. But penalty kill, we got to find some uh, specific penalty killers for that role. Jordan Stahl would be a perfect idea, but we can't bring Jordan Stahl back. His trade value is probably a little bit high. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly would have been a great idea as well, but I think he's a little bit too good for a third liner, you know? Can find a, a better third liner out there whose trade value is not that high up. Um, right now, Zach Smith is fine. That's why I want to find the wingers first because I think that the second line left wing and our defensive core are the things that we need to address immediately for the first uh, year Stanley Cup run or playoff run, hopefully if we can make the playoffs, right? Um, I think that that second line left wing in our defense needs to be on the top of our mind before we get another center. I think the centers right now on our team is fine, but that second line left wing and also Paul Martin. What do we what, what do we do with Paul Martin, Derek Puglia, and uh, Harrington? I definitely want to make one more trade come the trade deadline here. All right, but you know if the team is doing good. We don't want to just make a useless trade just to get a big name player in here, you know what I mean? 26, 18, and 5, it's not bad. I want to see some more wins though before the end here. If our penalty kill has gotten better, then that could be everything. Because I know we're going to score goals and Marc-Andre Fleury. He's playing good, boys. Don't get on uh, Don't get on uh, Flower just yet. He's playing just fine, alright? It's the playoffs that you have to worry about Marc-Andre Fleury. Every time he allows a goal, man, watch. Alright, so 27, 19, and 6... Three, two, uh, two more games before the end of January. We're flying along here. Holy shit, the Buffalo Sabres, 28 to... Nah, never mind, I should have made them a little bit worse. I guess they got their new roster, though. They got uh, Matt Molson on the team. Maybe he makes them a little bit better. First-line sniper. All right, so 28, 20, and 6 come the uh, the Olympic break. We're going to get to the uh, the trade deadline. Don't worry. Um, I just want to... You know what? I want to make sure I don't lose any of this. So hang on one second. That's much better. All right. So 28, 20, and 6 come the uh, few weeks away from the uh, trade deadline here. Not bad. Let's take a look at the individual stats. All right. First, we'll go to the standings. Hang on a sec. So the Pitt uh, Pittsburgh Penguins have been seemed to be of to be locked into that second position in the Metropolitan Division. All right, 62 points. Uh, first place in the East right now is 73, the Boston Bruins. So they've taken off a little bit. All right, but in our division, we're right there. And yeah, yeah, we, we're in a good spot in our division. Now, if you look at over here, yeah, it looks like they're taking off a little bit. So our division is definitely one of the weaker divisions. All right, just based off uh, the number one team. But uh, that's good news for us. So we're definitely in the playoff hunt right now. But with 20 regulation losses, you know, a five-game losing streak can definitely uh, be a bad thing for us. So it's not automatic, but if we keep on playing the way we are, there should be no problems. So team standings. Let's, keep, uh, let's take a look at our penalty kill here. All right, so goals four per game. I think that's gone down slightly. I think it was 2.9 before, but it's still top five in the NHL. I'm fine with that being the way it is. Um, I think, again, at Chris Kunitz or the second line left wing, if you improve one or even both, that goes up. So, okay, that's something we can look at in the future. Uh, goals against per game, 2.54. Uh, not bad. 11th in the NHL. Uh, what else? What else? Power play percentage, uh, 16.9, 19th in the NHL. Again, so yeah, like we're fifth for goals for our power play isn't there, but I guess we're scoring five on five goals. All right. So, and again, Kunitz and uh, Spalling on the uh, left wing. I think if you improve that, you improve the power play as well. Uh, penalty kill percentage. All right, so it was 78.2 before. It's up at 79. Barely has gone up. I mean, I guess it's gone up a little bit, but barely. But you know what's interesting? I mean, uh, talking about the simulation, how it works, right? The top teams in the NHL, Boston, Chicago, they also have a horrible penalty kill. And I wonder if it's because their 5-on-5 five five is so good, is the only way that the game can get goals against them is be is the, through the penalty kill or the, the power play, right? San Jose, I mean, Jesus. It could just be a coincidence, but remember, it's a game at the end of the day. Uh, home record, 16-10-0. Away record, 12-10-6. And, and our last 10, 4-3-3. Three, three. So, 4-6 in our last 10, see what I mean? We can go on a little bit of a losing streak with this team. So, we've got to iron out these problems. I think it's the uh, two left wingers and our defense. 
Let's take a look at Chris Kunitz and Spalding again. All right, so forwards. Crosby, 49 points in 54 games played. He's doing his job. Uh, Bobby Ryan, 49 in 54 games played. So it looks like Bobby Ryan and Crosby are working well together. They have the exact same amount of goals and the exact same amount of assists. It's about finding that left winger for them now. Because Chris Kunitz, only 31 points in 54 games played. He does have 18 goals, but that's probably a credit to uh, Sidney Crosby. He's only got 13 assists, which is because of the passing category. Bobby Ryan's got a passing of 90. Crosby got a passing of 99. You really need it in the 90s for it to uh, be dominant, right? So uh, Chris Kunitz, he's a plus 13. He's a penalty killer. But just remember that. He's uh, he's only 31 points. Uh, Malkin, 42 points in uh, 54 games played. 18 goals. Hornfist, 35. 19 goals. So we do have like, uh, you know, 520 goal scorers automatically right here. Probably a few 30 goal scorers. May well, maybe one or two 30 goal scorers. But at least 520 goal scorers. So we're getting some good depth goal scoring. But I just wonder if uh, Kunitz is holding that uh, first line back. And now Spalling's numbers are definitely starting to dip. Only 25 points in 54 games played. All right. But we knew this was going to happen. Remember, we're still in a good spot in the NHL with these kind of uh, players on our team. And we still have trading assets that we can upgrade. I just don't want to throw out the upgrades for nothing. I want it to be the right choice for the team. Here's everything else. Uh, defense. All right, Chris Letang. Could actually use some more points on the back end as well. Uh, I mean, Paul Martin's got 21, yeah, but Chris Tang only got 20, that's, it's actually, no, no, I take that back, it's not horrible, he could have a really good end to the season, and the stats would look okay, actually, Paul Martin's a minus 3, though, for God's sakes, alright, uh, goalies, Marc-Andre Fleury, 2.21 goals against average, save percentage of 92.25, I think Marc-Andre Fleury's playing just fine, I think it's our, uh, defensive core that we could upgrade, and our two left wingers, alright, so let's go ahead, all the way to the trade deadline here, and uh, we'll cap it off there just so we can... I'll go through all the teams and see who's available. All right. But, uh, you know, I don't think the stats are going to change too much from now till then. There's only like a few games. So, again, the things I want to see in the comments, the things that we're looking for, the left wing spots, first and second line. I mean, uh, if you guys have an idea to, to uh, trade away like a Chris Kunitz for another left winger and like bring in like a... Maybe there's a player that I could get for Chris Kunis that has less trade value and then get another left winger as well, right? I'm sure there's something that we can do out there. Or just move Chris Kunis down to the second line and get another first line left wing. Or leave Chris Kunis there and just upgrade Spalling. Because, I mean, I think he can still get it done in that position, Chris Kunitz. All right, maybe not point per game, but I think he, we, I think we can take a shot at the Stanley Cup this year with Chris Kunitz on our team. I think, that, I think he's fine for that, right? But... If you guys want to upgrade, I can understand that. And also, Paul Martin and our uh, two defensive prospects. I'd like to get another, not, not stud defenseman, but someone 85 or above that I can rely on to play big-time numbers with, like, a, a Chris Letang or to take over that second line. We can move uh, Ole Matta back up with Chris Letang. All right? But everything else, I think we're good. Like, goaltender, I won't be trading away Marc-Andre Fleury. I won't be getting another top six, four, uh, top six uh, center, all right, so unless he can play the wing. Uh, top two defenseman, no. Penalty killing winger as well I'd like to get, right? And maybe a fourth or third line center if I could pick him up for cheap and I replace Gotch. But Gotch is fine. But I'm just saying, you know, that, uh, that, uh, first line penalty killing center, I wouldn't mind uh, snagging up either. So, so there's a few things here in Pittsburgh that we could get. So I want to see you guys go nuts in the comments here. Very important time for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Mario Lemieux is breathing down my, uh, breathing down my back. He wants to see a good cup run this year. None of this out in the first or second round, and maybe if you get to the third round, get swept by the Boston Bruins. No, 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 no. we got to have at least a good conference final run. Competitive conference final run. That's the minimum. That's the bar for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. All right, so 30, 23, and 7. We actually lose a few games there. Yeah, we're actually on a four-game losing streak right now. All right, but 30, 23, and 7 should still be good enough, especially in our division. Whoa! Starting to catch up a little. Well, yeah, you know what? No, we're not. In, we're not in a good, a good position because Detroit it can still catch us in the wild card. If, and if uh, the Islanders and Columbus even could come up there, it's a tight division. Yeah, it's going to be a tight wild card race. But at least our um, our destiny is in our own hands. All we need to do is win games. 30, 23, and seven. Here's the NHL right now. All right, Bobby Ryan is leading our team in points. Goals and assists, so I guess it was a good pickup. But we got to figure out what we want to do here. All right, so I'll go stats one more time. Uh, team standings, just show you guys. We won't go the individual stats. 
But just to show you, goals for per game. So with this team, with Chris Kunitz, we're still fourth best for goals for in the NHL. All right, so... I want to fix this stat. Goals against. That actually got a little bit worse. So we got to fix that. Power play percentage. I could use that, but we're scoring goals. And penalty kill percentage. Oh my god, we're dead last in the NHL for penalty kill. Okay, so, I mean, 5-on-5 five five seems great. The only way the other teams are scoring on us is the penalty kill. So maybe if we can make that better, a devoted penalty killer, you know, that could help us out. Home record, 17-11-1. Away record, 13-12-6. So we're not good on the road. And our last 10, we're 3-5-2. and 3-7 and seven in our last 10 games. Alright, so you see what I mean about being able to miss the playoffs if we go on a losing streak. We haven't gone on a, uh, we've been above 500 the whole season, but this would be a horrible time, freaking a horrible time to uh, let it all uh, slip away. All right, so to show you guys one last thing. There you go. How do you think we should improve this? How do you think we should improve that? All right, penalty, uh, penalty kill and power play would get improved just by uh, sh uh, shaping around our top six. All right, and trade negotiations. Let me just fly through some of the teams. We don't need to look at the available goalies. I will not be making a trade for a goalie. All right, but we'll just go through some of the teams here. You guys can just quickly take a look at the overalls and the players. I will not I will not slow down. All right. Remember, low trade value, high overall is the, uh, the best bet for us right now. We're not looking for a young player who's going to be good for the next 10 years. Give me a player who's, who, who will produce for the next two or three years. All right? Give me a guy who will produce for this year if he's got no trade value, and I'll give a draft picked up for him. For sure I will. All right, so there you go. Almost done. Boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom. There you go. All right, so there was a list of all the available players on the uh, teams. So go nuts. What do we need to turn this team into not only a playoff team, but a Stanley Cup contender? We're definitely a goal scoring team, but we got to get on top of our goals against and our special teams. All right. So, boys, let me know, and I will see you in the next video.